one. The first thing you can do if you want to have a winning PR campaign or if you want to take advantage of some PR tactics to get in front of people this holiday season is to consider your messaging. Does that mean messages and selling points and even products that were working last year may not be as relevant this year. The world has changed and so have consumers buying habits. Regardless of where you stand on things concerning the pandemic, the reality is that consumers' buying habits have changed and failure to acknowledge the changes that have taken place in the world could be detrimental to your business and to your holiday sales. Acknowledge any changes that have taken place for your customers and speak to the needs and pain points they have this year. The types of products and services you're pushing this year may be different than what you've pushed in the past. The price points might be different. The types of products or services that you're marketing this year may be vastly different from what you've pushed in past years. Um, but the, the key here is the willingness and the ability to change some of your messaging so that it meets customers where they're at now in this pandemic world that we're in. Um, the key here to having the right messaging is really to know your audience and to understand what's driving their buying decisions so that you can speak to their needs in your messaging. If you can communicate what they want and need, you make it easier for them to buy from you. So step one of any PR campaign, any good marketing campaign really, is to consider your messaging and to be flexible and make sure you're communicating things that will meet customers and potential clients where they're at. Okay, the next step or the next tactic you can use, especially if you're a product brand, is to pitch your products to holiday gift guides. So um, if, your product, if your business or brand has products, what you can do is you can offer to send products to journalists, editors, bloggers, maybe even influencers. We'll get on that a little more later, but um, for review and inclusion in their holiday gift guides. Um, what you would do is you would create a list of local or national, if you're a bigger brand or if you have, you know, bigger goals, um, or industry reporters, bloggers, and editors. You can usually find their contact information on their websites. Um, I would avoid pitching general tip email addresses or general newsroom email addresses and try to find specific contact information for particular editors and reporters instead. Uh, but the idea is that you put them on a media list and then you reach out to them with a brief, concise email explaining who you are, what your product is, and who you think your product would appeal to, and then offer to send a product for review for inclusion in one of their gift guides. So always make sure your packaging, packaging is on point if you get to the point where you're sending a product for review. And always make sure you send full-size products if someone gets back to you and says they want to review your product for their gift guide. Once you send those pitches, make sure you follow up, follow up, follow up. Obviously draw the line at stalking them, but do some follow up because it makes a huge difference. Um, and then after you send your product for review, follow up again to make sure they got it and to get an ETA on when the review might be published. Step three or tip three. If you are not a product brand, or if you don't have products that would make sense for a gift guide, you still have an opportunity to position yourself as an expert and get yourself in front of people via the media. Um, what you can do is position yourself as an expert in your industry, take a bit of a thought leadership approach, and reach out to some of those same media contacts we discussed in the last step. So, Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to build the relationships with the right people, editors, bloggers, reporters, who have the same target audience as you, or who might have, you know, your local audience's attention. And even if you don't have a product business, you can find a way to position yourself as an expert in your industry and offer to weigh in on stories that they're already writing. Um, basically, what this is going to do is it's going to help you create authority in your industry or in your local area, and it's going to get you in front of people that you might not be able to get in front of via other marketing channels. So when you reach out to them with a pitch about your business, instead of actually pitching your business, what you're going to do instead is you're going to offer to weigh in on trending holiday stories or provide expert advice for stories they might already be writing or offer to give them something that their audience might be interested in. This changes the nature of the pitch entirely. 
if you send someone an email or an editor an email that you've never talked to before and you're just talking about how great your business is, it's going to get deleted if it gets read to begin with. However, if you can send something that offers to give them free advice to their audience or positions you as an expert, now you have something they might be interested in and it, the likelihood of you getting covered is different. So, for example, if you operate a local mechanic shop, you could reach out to your local news stations by pitching their business editor and then offer to provide tips that consumers can use to make sure their cars are safe before holiday travels. It's a totally different pitch than what you'd pitch if you were just pitching your business. The key is position yourself as an expert and offer to provide something of value. Don't just pitch your business and hope for coverage. Next idea that you can use, and again, this is usually most relevant to product businesses, is to reach out to relevant influencers. So if you don't have influencers or if you're not a product business, you may consider strategic partners. So if you have a product business, let's start there, especially if your products are related to fashion, beauty, health, wellness, travel, lifestyle, children, or parenting, it may be worth your time to reach out to relevant influencers. Influencers could be anything from social media influencers, high profile bloggers, YouTubers, anything of that nature where the influencer has a large audience that's similar to yours. By reaching out to these people and suggesting a partnership with them, you stand to get in front of a much larger audience than you could do on your own and potentially create a source of traffic and sales. For example, you could reach out to an influencer in your industry and offer to provide them a product for review or even suggest a paid arrangement in some cases. The key is to make sure their audience is aligned with yours. If you don't have a product business, Reaching out to your traditional social media influencers probably doesn't make as much sense, but in this case, instead of reaching out to social media influencers, what you could do is you could try to find, um, you know, strategic partnerships that can help you get in front of a larger audience. So this could be other businesses in your industry, complementary businesses who have a similar target audience. Something you could do is you could reach out and suggest partnering on a digital event or offering some sort of co-sponsored holiday giveaway that will boost your visibility during the holiday season. The key to winning partnerships are choosing partners who also have visibility in the community you want to target so that your joint effort will get you in front of more people. So either way, whether you're reaching out to influencers or whether you're reaching out to strategic partners or possibly both, the idea is that if you're forming the right partnerships, you can get in front of a much larger audience than you could do on your own and it will also give you an element of social proof that you don't have from other marketing channels. Advantages to using PR during the holiday season. I'm obviously biased. PR is my wheelhouse. I love it. I think it's great. I think it solves a lot of problems. But there are advantages that I can point to um, that you can see if you ran your own PR campaign. So number one, it boosts your digital presence. We know that most people are going to be shopping online, and even if they don't, they're going to be doing research online before they make a purchase usually. So it boosts your digital presence. It helps people find you better when you're, they're looking in the search engines. Um, it can become a potential source of website traffic, and who doesn't love that? Um, it has great SEO benefits. So you know, for our brand, when I've done our own PR over the past 10 years, the placements that we've gotten have helped us moved to the top of Google. Now we're ranking number one and two on Google just from our PR efforts. So it has some great long-term SEO benefits that will help you not just during the holiday season, but all year long. Um, PR campaigns can help increase your brand exposure, both in traditional media as well as on social media. It provides social proof and third-party validation because you're not out there paying to tell someone how great you are. Other people are singing your praises for you, which is great. Um, and then the right strategy on PR can also help boost your conversion rates and drive sales, which is what we're talking about anyway. So those are a few quick PR tips. I could go on all day long about this, but starting there will certainly keep you busy and should make enough of a, a dent in your PR efforts to kind of drive the ball forward as you move into the holiday season. Any questions? Any questions anybody? And while we're waiting, if anybody does want to chime in, um, I will just kind of highlight on some of this stuff. You know, Blair's really opened our world up to a lot of, lot of these different concepts and especially the, our clients. Um, 
you know, even on our website, when you're looking at, you know, noboundaries.marketing, you'll see at the very bottom, the features that we've been in. And, you know, I can't tell you how many people already have commented on, wow, that's really neat. You know, we have some local and national publications that have featured our information or our quotes. And so, again, it's that brand recognition. It's opened us up as an agency to clients that might not otherwise have thought twice about us. Um, typically agency or companies that go with maybe a larger scale marketing agency, you know, this opens us up to that arena, which we're more than capable of competing in. So uh, to me, I've seen the value in this and this isn't coming from me pitching it. This is, it's not my wheelhouse to pitch, but um, this is just validating these, you know, accurate truths behind it. Um, also too, we have a client that Blair's been working with Loyal Life. We just posted her on our page. I mean, she's had some amazing, uh, I guess what we would call them gift guides, reach mm -hmm. out to her to feature her products. And I can't tell you how amazing, I mean, she is head over heels. I mean, it's such an amazing opportunity for her as a business. Um, you know, a lot of people just don't know how to use PR the right way. And so sometimes some of these tips are just what you need to kind of get yourself over the edge. Certainly there's a lot of things we, us as business owners can do on our own, but I would also highlight to you that, you know, sometimes engaging the professional it's not as cost prohibitive as you think it might be. Um, I think PR does get a bad rap for that as being something that, you know, costs an arm and a leg and, you know, you're going to have to mortgage your house for or something like that, but that's not the case at all. Most of the things that we do with Blair are extremely cost effective um, and almost an immediate ROI. So that's my two cents. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Jeanette, any PR questions for Blair? Anything come in chat? I don't see anything in the chat box, but like I said, her contact information will be in the email that will be sent out um, soon after, sorry, the day after this webinar. So if you don't have any questions for her now, that's okay. Um, maybe you just don't feel don't feel a little embarrassed by your question like I mentioned before, um, but I assure you she, she will probably answer with ease and make you feel comfortable about it. So um, I know Blair, you said earlier that you will probably have to jam out today. And so um, from here, it's going to be Tom and Chris taking over for the webinar, for the rest of the webinar. Thanks, awesome. Blair, for coming today. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys too. <laughs> All righty. So we're going to transition a little bit into my segment, my favorite part of this, which is my part. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but this is going to be a little bit more interactive than maybe some of our other classes have been. So my tips for holiday marketing. Um, so what can you do? Uh, first and foremost, I, I think the biggest thing that we all need to take a step back and do is we need to take a breath. We need to start by being a little more optimistic. There's a lot of negativity out there. And I can tell you from many, many years of experience, negativity is what's going to drag me down that I'm not creative when I'm negative, um, nothing really gets accomplished. And I think most people would share that same feeling. So dust it off, shake off that bad juju. You know, we need to start by turning this 2020 whole little thing around, if that's possible. So uh, second step is we need to start by identifying the significance behind certain upcoming dates. So the number one question that I get relative to holiday marketing is, well, what do I do? You know, um, you know, the common ones, Christmas, Thanksgiving, maybe Black Friday can come to mind, New Year's. Uh, but what a lot of people don't take in, or they take for granted is all these little holidays in between. All these like little fun one-off dates that, you know, uh, again, may not pose anything significant per se, um, but again, offer a lot of opportunity. So, First and foremost, now I'm going to go through some of these. Now, we're, this is going to be the interactive part of it. So if you want, if anybody feels brave enough to chime in, I'm not going to give you the dates, but I'm going to see if anybody knows what some of these are. And if you're like me, you've already pulled out your phone to look this up, but we're going to see who knows what. Now, obviously, Labor Day, we just passed that. But does anybody know when Oktoberfest is? And I'm going to give you a hint. It's not October. It's not October. End of September? Mm, I mean, that's broad. I'll give you that. 25th? The 25th? Let's see. Look. It is. Sorry, I was pulling it back up here. 
Uh, let's see here. And of course, it's not on this one. It was, yeah, I pulled up the wrong calendar. But anyway, it actually is in sometime late September. Uh, first day of fall. Does anybody know when the first day of fall is? I don't know. October? End of September. September 21st. There you go. Good job. Cheating and I love it. Uh, coffee day, Tom. I'm going to say. I know this one. <laughs> I know this one. Bad graphic to use. Um, but some other fun ones. Bosses Day. Does anybody know when Bosses Day is? I do have that one here if anybody wants that one. It's October 16th. So for all those uh, bosses out there. Um, other ones Halloween, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Shop Small, um, uh, Small Business Saturday, uh, Cyber Monday, another fun one in there. And there's all sorts of other ones. And these go on throughout the year. So the big emphasis that I want to put on this is that we're talking about, you know, this for what it is today for the, you know, holiday season. But the reality is holidays happen year round. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to be successful at this stuff, if you really want to get a big bang for your buck, what you're going to do is you're going to embrace some of these one off. We'll call them odd, if you will, some of them. I mean, Hanukkah is not odd. Christmas isn't odd. Those are your mainstream holidays, Veterans Day, so on and so forth. Those aren't odd. But we're talking, you know, Holiday shipping deadline day, free shipping day. I didn't actually know that that was a day, but that is December 18th, Tom. Um, pretty sure you are going to grab that one too. But, you know, there, like I said, there's just tons of opportunity out there. So I'm going to go back on a slide here real quick because I want to brainstorm with you guys on a couple of things. And I'm just going to give you my two cents. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do on this type, these type of days. So Oktoberfest, German. I mean, there's so many opportunities to go with that. If you're a beer drinker, uh, you know, we could do something fun. I probably wouldn't change up my website for that. But I can tell you, I definitely go to social media for something like that. Do some themed posts uh, right around that time. First day of fall, same thing. Um, you know, you can have, we'll talk about websites here in a minute, but there's tons of fun you can have around that. Again, most of this is going to be relative to themed posts on social media. Uh, but also some other opportunities if you do direct mail. That's another huge opportunity there uh, for you to theme some of your uh, material. If you're doing ads in something like, uh, you know, a periodical or, you know, a community newsletter, something like that. These are all things that people can get around. You know, they, it's all about that, you know, brand recognition. Uh, coffee day, that's my own personal favorite day. So there you go. Uh, bosses day. For all those in the office here that are wondering what the best day is, nobody's listening to me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Halloween, again, favorite holiday of the year. We have Veterans Day, Thanksgiving, um, Black Friday, uh, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday. Again, most of those are pretty self-explanatory in terms of themes. Uh, free shipping day, December 18th. Does anybody know when the last day to ship a card is? You didn't put the date on it? Uh. We're not talking to you. Can you mute him, Jeanette? <laughs> mute him permanently. Uh, last day to mail a card was the 18th. And then the last day for priority mail is the 22nd. So food for thought. Uh, but again, that has to be overnight. So there you go. Uh, you have Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and then the inevitable now, Christmas Returns Week. So again, those days right after between Christmas and New Year, believe it or not, that is, you know, with the amount of returns that come back, that is a huge promotional time of the year. So again, commerce doesn't stop. This is something that just keeps going. So, you know, think about this for your business, what might be applicable, what you might use to your advantage, because again, this, it's, it's, this is the holiday season. It comes around once a year. So Hey, Chris, um, real quick, uh, from a digital perspective, like a paid ads perspective, um, obviously you're looking for any event that you can differentiate yourself or give yourself a, an excuse to really offer some kind of a discount or a benefit or call attention to what it is you're doing. Now, everybody knows Christmas. Everybody knows that time in between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas is going to be very competitive, which means if you're doing digital ads, it could be a little more expensive. But if you're celebrating National Coffee Day or International Coffee Day, 
you're not going to have a lot of competition, but you've just built demand. You've just built an event. You've built something special. So taking advantage of, of some of these smaller holidays and treating it like one of your bigger ones, that's going to be just a great little revenue pop for you because you get all the benefits out of it, out of it without all of the competition that drives up the cost. So I definitely, um, you know, write down some of those dates and kind of keep on it every month. Look for a couple of special events and uh, see how you can promote around it. And then, awesome. Chris, I did want to be the first to go ahead and wish you a happy Christmas Returns Day. <laughs> well played. Well played. I am muting myself after that. <laughs> so how can you guys compete as small businesses? You know, this is the fun part. This is where I tell you, you got to shake off that dust. You got to shake off the bad juju. You got to be positive, energetic, and you really got to get those creative juices going. If that's not you and if you're not the creative one, engage somebody who is, friend, family, kid, doesn't matter. There's tons of resources out there. It's just you got to start, you know, really thinking outside the box. So for right now, like Tom said, competition is going to be crazy this year. Uh, everybody's going online. So you, you have to remember that ad space is going to shoot through the roof. Uh, you know, again, ads, 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 everywhere going to be ran. So you, you need to pick and choose your battles. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, with like Google ads or something like that might not be cost effective this year. Doesn't mean maybe we don't try, but you got to start looking for that diamond in the rough. So how do we make sure we don't fall short? First and foremost, we, I have to stress this. We are in an economy now that demands customer service because from a digital perspective, likely you, you have a very limited interaction with a potential customer. And so if you're going to drop the ball on that, that is something that will resonate with them and likely you will lose that business. Unless you have a niche product that, you know, they can't get anywhere else, um, chances are you're probably not going to see those people again. So customer service is everything. You really got to think about how you can go above and beyond for your clients. Um, again, we're not asking you to break the bank. We're not saying you need to give away your products. That's not it at all. But what are some of the things that you can do? The key, one of the key differentiators this year is going to be customer service. So it's a joyful time of the year, but there's also a lot of stress associated with the holiday. So think outside the box. What could you do to make something more convenient? How could you, you know, bestow some of your, you know, knowledge or, you know, information about a product or service? How could you make that better for a client? Uh, it's these little things that are going to make a huge difference for you. Uh, if you can alleviate some of the consumer stress, you know, you're going to make their experience even better. Hey, Chris, uh, kind of getting back to that. Um, Google sent me an email, probably a couple other thousand too, but I'm just going to say they sent me one specifically about shopping insights. And one of the things they said that I thought was very eye-opening and is something probably very applicable to this year more so than ever is that 39% of consumers, if they're going to go to a place to pick it up, they want to be able to order online and get curbside pickup. They want to be able to get it without having to go into the store or potentially risking obviously catching something. So kind of think about stuff like that. Sometimes you may think, hey, you know what? I have that. Uh, I don't, you know, that's really nothing special out of the ordinary. We do that already. Well, if you're doing that, make sure people know because right now, almost four out of 10 people want that service. So anything you have that's gonna provide a good uh, service to somebody, don't assume they know that about you already. You know, really promote that, really let people know that. So I just thought the curbside uh, pickup uh, statistic was really, really interesting. Yeah, and I think that's a good point, Tom. You know, it's funny, I just talked to a restaurant the other day and um, fantastic restaurant actually in the Peoria area. And they were saying um, in our conversation, I asked, you know, hey, do you guys, do any type of delivery or, you know, don't do that. How about, you know, Grubhub, Postmates, anything like that? Nope, don't do that. Is there any reason? No, not really. And, you know, that it's just eye-opening that me as a consumer, to be honest with you, I, I mean, I would love, I do like, and I still do go into restaurants, but I hate to say this, that sometimes eating at home has been a lot more convenient, that delivery, that you know, I can sit here and work till I'm blue in the face. And next thing you know, the doorbell rings and my dinner's there ready to go. Um, trust me, don't, any, don't let anybody tell you running a business is easy because it is not. Um, so with that said, you know, we've taken advantage of these type of services and we'll continue to. So it's not that I don't want to eat in a restaurant. I still want their food. I just don't want to go there. So um, those are great opportunities and a great point, Tom. So 
moving on here, uh, show customers the appreciation they deserve. I'll tell you what, a thank you really does go a long way. Um, and not just an in passing or, you know, a, a required thank you. You know, a sincere thank you. It I tell you, it makes a huge impact on somebody. Even better, a thank you card or a holiday card. Those are fantastic ways to show your appreciation to a longtime client or even a new client for that matter. Uh, it, it's just it's one of those areas that you can't go wrong. So if you have the opportunity to do that or if you don't do that currently, again, there's tons of opportunities out there. Send out cards. I mean, hell, go buy a hundred pack of thank you cards and you can just hand write them. They don't have to be, you know, something crazy. I mean, definitely put some effort into it, but you know, just a simple, meaningful note. Hey, really appreciate you stopping in on Saturday. Thanks for doing business with us. We look forward to seeing you again, you know, and then sign. I think that's fantastic. Um, try to avoid the computer printout ones that are, you know, lack a signature. I always like to see where somebody signs just makes it more personal for me. I'm just speaking on my experience, but again, work within your means. If that's all you got, then do what you can. Um, Another way to show appreciation is loyalty or rewards programs. Buy 10, get one free type thing. Consumers always love that. Um, those are great ideas for the holiday. I understand from some businesses, they can be a little bit difficult or challenging to implement. So, you know, again, we're not looking to make business that much different, that much more difficult. We're just saying, you know, think outside the box. And if you have the ability to do something like this, really think about adding it in. Again, loyalty programs are fantastic. Uh, virtual product showcases. So unfortunately, like Blair had mentioned, we do not know what's going to happen this season. Even the best marketers, best CMOs of the top, you know, Fortune 500 companies, everybody's scrambling and throwing their best guess in the hat. And that's exactly what it is. What we do know is e-commerce is blowing up. Um, just in the last quarter alone, we saw a 33% increase in sales. So we know that's not going away. Uh, brick and mortar stores, you know, unfortunately, we just don't know where, you know, the health restrictions are going to be, you know, with social distancing, it can be challenging to get out there and purchase from a retailer. You know, a couple of key, po key components, I think, go along with virtual product showcases. You got to let people know how to do business with you. Um, I can't stress that enough. I think I've mentioned it about 3000 times in all my other seminars, but, you know, I still find to this date, uh, clients, non-clients, just businesses that have questions that come to us. And I, I'll look through their website and it's, how, well, what do you want me to do? Do you, you know, doctors are a big one right now. Are you allowed to bring your spouse with you or a friend or something? You know, most doctor's offices, nope, you can't. But some websites you go to, you wouldn't know that. So, you know, you really got to be transparent right now. Let people know how you want to do business or how you have to do business in order to keep your doors open. Uh, I think, oh, go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry. Um, were you finished on this page? I, I didn't want to interrupt you. I've got a little bit more. We're going to talk about virtual product showcase, but jump in. Uh, okay. Well, what I was going to say is that in addition to kind of like, you know, um, the showcase aspect, I think also having a very convenient people online to be able to communicate with you is going to be very paramount. So, for example, chat is a great way for people to be able to get instant answers to their questions, because if they're not able to get answers to this, their question, they're going to shop elsewhere. Um, so chat would be something to look into. Um, probably the easiest form of chat is Facebook Messenger. Uh, if you have a Facebook fan page, you have a messenger. I think it's, what is it? Me.messenger. Oh my gosh, I don't even remember what it is anymore, but it's, uh, um, but you have a, a Facebook uh, chat box and you go ahead and put that and you can actually put like your messenger on your website. Um, and you can go ahead and have people ask questions. You can automate some responses or you can get a notification when somebody's chatting you. Um, but I think uh, implementing chat on a website right now is going to be very important because, again, like I said, when they have questions, not a lot of people uh, like to pick up the phone and talk anymore. So being able to actually just type a question to somebody makes a really, really big difference. And if you start seeing a lot of similar questions, then you can also make updates to your virtual product showcase uh, to proactively answer some of those questions. So I'm sorry, Chris, that's all I wanted to no, no, jump in that, and say that. That was another really great point, honestly. And, you know, we're in that society for immediate gratification. We don't want to research. We don't want to do a ton of work. Uh, we want people to do everything for us. I mean, I, I'm guilty of it, just like I'm sure everybody else is on, the, on this uh, seminar today. But, you know, really think about that. How can you make somebody, we have, um, I have on my phone, 
we have a chat feature that it literally rings right into my phone. Anytime I can see who's on my site, I can see what they're doing on my site, what page they're at. I can proactively send pop-ups to them. You know, hey, do you have any questions? Can I help you with something? You know, and so again, I'm reaching out so that I can be proactive versus reactive. It makes the difference between booking an appointment and not. I'm going to do that every single time. Um, but to the virtual product showcase, um, this is a really, really fun thing to do. Um, it can be intimidating for some, but I would stress to you, you know, this is just about creating some type of get, and again, it's vague. It's not meant to be, it's not, you do this to create a virtual product showcase. You can do online video. You can do uh, image slideshows. You can do whatever you want to showcase your product in a digital fashion. I prefer video. Um, I think it gives me an opportunity to talk about something, illustrate something, really go in depth into something. And that's really what people need to Blair's point about establishing yourself as an expert. That that's exactly what this does. When you go through a particular product or service. Now, if you're an e-commerce retailer and you have thousands of products, I get it. That can be tough. That's going to come down to you prioritizing what you want to sell and, you know, just putting your effort into that. We know realistically you can't do a thousand products. I mean, that would, that would take a while. Um, so I can't say you can't. It's impractical to think you can do a thousand products right away. But if you feature 10, 15 products, you know, that's reasonable. That's something any business owner can really sit down, create a few videos on the, these products, post them on the website, and that'll help consumers make the right decision for them. The other big benefit, um, and this is something we don't mention on the slide, is it cuts down on your returns. Um, that's something, we, again, we all take for granted. People look at video as, oh, I don't want my face to be on there. Well, what if somebody buys your product and then returns it? I mean, you're out at that point. You're out money. I know all too well what that looks like, and it's not a fun thing. So think that through. Not only can you attract new clients, but you can also retain those clients by helping them understand the value that you bring to the table and the value behind your products and services. Next up, let's get creative. Um, so again, we started off uh, the session with that, you know, just again, encouraging creativity. The fact is dynamic visuals, they dominate the marketplace. It's what you need to stand out. So if you're not a creative person, you need to find one. I have mine right next to me. My wife is my creative. She is amazing. She does amazing things. And I'll tell you what, I love every single one of them. Um, she produces things from the heart. It, it, it's reminiscent of our brand, our, our personality. You know, so get creative with stuff. If you're using a Polaroid, as my example alludes to, if you're using a Polaroid from 1983 to illustrate your product or service, you may have taken that down to Walgreens and scanned it digitally. That is an unacceptable use of, of, of a picture. Uh, great for a scrapbook, not something that needs to be online. You need to invest in your products. Um, last class we talked, or actually a couple classes ago, we talked about your digital footprint, your, your website, your social media. These are often the first places consumers will interact with your business now. So it's not a matter of, oh, I was driving down the road and I saw your location. Chances are that's not, that's not going to happen anymore. Now they're looking at your website. They're looking at your social media. Maybe somebody referred them to you. And again, they're looking at these sources. So you need as a business owner to really start investing your time, money, and energy into your online presence if you haven't already. So get fun. Have some fun with this stuff. Um, I have clients that for breast cancer awareness, we turn their website pink. You know, um, there's tons of fun stuff you can do and it doesn't have to break the bank. Uh, we'll get into websites here in just a minute, but Part of being creative is just thinking outside of the box. Like for us, my favorite Halloween's or my favorite holiday is Halloween. You can bet uh, I've already challenged my office uh, people in my office to a decorating contest. Uh, I think I've spent like five hundred plus dollars at at home and other various little you know Halloween decoration stores. So you know you really need to think about that. Like for me, I'm going to blow up from social media on my Halloween or with Halloween posts. What's your favorite holiday? You know. Is it Veterans Day? You really want to honor the veterans? Maybe you do a series of posts on that. We're not talking about just doing one thing. This would be creating a series of posts that really help people connect with you and connect that holiday with you. So uh, email marketing, oldie but goodie. Um, it's something that sadly we thought was going to die, but never actually died and then actually came back with a vengeance. So, you know, with people stuck in their houses, this is a fantastic way to connect with them. So if you haven't done an email marketing campaign or you don't know how to, 
uh, systems like MailChimp. There's a bunch of free ones out there. MailChimp, I think, is free up to like 10,000 subscribers, something like that. Um, so there's a lot. It doesn't have to be cost prohibitive. But what I would say is this. With a successful email marketing campaign would also include some automation, which is a drip campaign, uh, email funnel, stuff like that. These are fantastic opportunities for you as a business owner to really invest in something that can make a huge difference with your business. So to help you understand what a drip campaign would look like, a drip campaign would be somebody that comes to your website. Maybe they fill out a form, they purchase a product, whatever the case may be, and they authorize or approve you to send them email marketing information, right? So setting up that email marketing drip campaign will automatically send specific messages to them at certain intervals. And I'll tell you what, that keeps your brand top of mind. It increases sales. It increases repeat and referral traffic. Uh, so many benefits to this. So it might cost you a couple hundred bucks to set up if you don't know how to do it, to pay somebody to do it. Again, it's, it's fairly inexpensive. And once it's set up, you might only have to make minor changes to it, you know, on a yearly basis. But the point of it is, is that we want to keep our businesses top of mind to clients. And this is how we do it through things like email marketing. Customize the website. My favorite part, because I love websites. Um, so this is something that, again, I think a lot of people take for granted. Now, some of the franchises, I get it. You may not have the ability to update your website. Um, but I tell you, these shouldn't be stagnant. Theme them up. Have fun with this stuff. You know, the biggest thing that I hear from businesses is they don't want to invest the money. Well, you know, the argument that I make to businesses is that, well, what would you say you invest every year in decorations for the office, uh, new pictures on the wall, whatever the case may be. The answer might be none, and that's unfortunate for you. But most businesses, I know for us, uh, I just spend another couple hundred dollars on some uh, pictures for the wall in the office. Um, so, you know, I'm willing to make that investment. And guess what? People don't even come into my office anymore. So really, it's the website. That's where people are going. So like my wife the other day, she just updated our logo and she put um, one of the charities that we support this month, we're, we sponsor um, Chance Shelter. It's a, a dog rescue out here in the Surprise area. So she put paw prints going across our logo. Again, silly, but fun, you know? Um, I've already had tons of people reach out and compliment that. So think about your website. What can you do to tune it up? Chances are, might only cost you a hundred bucks, maybe 150. And that's being generous. Like that's, that's paying somebody top dollar for something like that. Chances are it's probably not even going to cost you that. Uh, changing your theme colors are really, really easy to do. And then you can always change them back. Uh, if you don't want to invest in that, if you want to just rather maybe update some graphics, um, there are simple overlays that you can do like snow falling down, which you're probably not going to see much of that in Arizona. But again, for those businesses that, um, are maybe up north. Um, but there, like I said, there's any number of ideas that you do. You just need to get crafty with it and really think outside the box. Um, again, first impressions are everything nowadays. So let's see here. Next up, social ads. So this is to Tom's point, you know, right now it's the holiday season and oftentimes, you know, Google my business or Google ads, they're going to probably be a little bit pricey this year, but that doesn't mean we don't look into it. So again, that's not true for every business, but social media is one of those areas that ads are extremely cheap right now. Um, again, they might go up a little bit, but still they're, I would still consider them affordable. And oftentimes it's that first impression of a consumer is going to have with your business. So when we look at this engagement rates are on the rise. We talked about social media and the um, analytics class last week, or excuse me, last month where we went, really went through the information. And you can see through your analytics, engagement rates are through the roof. Uh, and this goes across the board on pretty much every social platform. So take advantage of that. Um, some brand awareness ads can really go a long way to getting your products and your services out there. Uh, I know for me personally, my wife and I, we probably purchased about in the last 30, maybe 60 days, a dozen or so things off of social. I mean, again, find some great deals out there. So, um, you know, these are all brands that I was unfamiliar with previously. Might have been interested in a particular product or service, but ended up landing on those. So holiday shopping, branding these messages, so on and so forth. There, there's so many, so many opportunities there. So don't be afraid to invest in social ads to generate some brand awareness. 
Definitely uh, one of the strategies I would kind of recommend, and I don't want to be too complicated with this, but I would recommend really using as a top of funnel video. Video is going to be your lowest cost uh, top of funnel opportunity. And from there, you can create what I call invisible audiences. You can uh, kind of track people who watch a certain percentage of your video, and you can go ahead and remarket them with a special offer. So that could be a very cost-effective way for you to kind of uh, sort your audience, so to speak. So if somebody watches 15 seconds of uh, a minute-long video, well, maybe you have a couple of other ads you want to show them. But if somebody watches a full minute, maybe it's time to go ahead and remarket them with an offer. Uh, and in the offer, make it a very good offer, you know, offer them a discount, uh, maybe discount code, whatever works. The great thing about using an invisible audience, which is somebody based on an action they perform. Um, so it's not like, you know, an interest, somebody has an interest in this, this is an audience that you're creating based on somebody's action. Um, you can really control, you know, like if you want to do a, a special offer, this or that, you can control it to people only who have seen 100% of your video. So um, again, there are ways to do that. Facebook's very helpful with that. And uh, again, Chris and I can probably help you out if you have any questions, uh, our contact information will be provided. But I think that's gonna be a very cost effective strategy for the holidays. Perfect, yep, he's 100%. So, um, and last but not least, so this kind of tags back onto what Blair was mentioning here before about you know getting behind people uh, that share maybe a demographic that you wanna target. Uh, it's the holiday season, getting behind a local nonprofit. Um, that's, it, it, I think it goes without saying, but, you know, as business owners, you got to remember, you know, this is our opportunity to give back to. Uh, it's, and it's not being selfish when we align ourselves with a nonprofit to not only help them, but help ourselves. Um, I, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, I, you know, I don't want to use that for my benefit, but why not? And it, it's not being, it's not being ridiculous. It's not, ridiculous to think that that's an appropriate thing to do. So I always say to my wife, you know, we pick a new business every single quarter to give back to. Um, and yeah, you're, I, I do look at that stuff. I look at the demographic they support. Um, I look to see if that could be potentially my target audience. And, you know, we get behind, they're still a nonprofit. It's still doing the right thing. Um, so, you know, I would encourage you really look at that, find a nonprofit that you can support this holiday season. Um, and helps them drive some awareness about your product and services while also doing some good. So uh, did you know 86 nonprofit organizations in the chamber directory? I learned something new, trust me. So 86 of them in there. So if you need a reference, if you, you don't really know somebody or something that you want to get behind, maybe you can get some inspiration from the chamber website. Uh, a lot of great nonprofits in there. Mm -hmm.